now on the bottom line. And here we go. It is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. Oh. Armani and Edwards, bottom line, Woodward Sports Network. Ryan, Armani, and uh, Braylon Edwards. Did I already say that already? Hey, man. What's up, buddy? How you doing, baby? I am doing good. I'm back in the house with my main man, my brother, Ryan Armani. It's going to be a fun show. A lot going on in the world of sports. So it's the gift that always gives, man. It keeps giving on. But good to see my man Fletch from the weekend. And good to see my buddy Stick over there. Who's nursing a right wrist injury? That's what happens when you're the man on the softball diamond. Things happen. Once again, Tom Mazway out today as we wave to the Maz chair. What's up, Maz? Hey, Maz. Uh, what's up, Maz? Hey, what's Maz. Going on? Uncle uh, Maz on the couch. Uncle Maz. Oh, oh wah, 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 wah. his water is still there from Friday, though. Uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get that door closed for you as well uh, back there in just a second. But, um, Braylon, this was such a great day. My day started wonderfully. Can I just tell you why my day started so wonderfully today? Let's tune in. And, and first of all, for those of you who are wondering why this rock will be on the desk, it's a rock that Maz gave me, so this is my Maz rock. There you but go. Yes, please tell me, why did your day start so wonderfully? Because... The N excuse me, not the NFL. CBS Sports today had a little fun this morning. <laughs> this is the tweet from CBS Sports on a random Tuesday in August. Can we put it up for a minute, please? How about this? The tweet was the Braylon game. Right. The dominating performance from uh, the 2004 Michigan State game in which it is affectionately dubbed as the Braylon game. And there was text to this as yeah. well. The tweet said, as I pull it up here, of course, they're not loading on my phone right now. Um, but the tweet was, Braylon was that guy. Yeah. I mean, you were that guy. How cool does that make you feel today? Uh, it makes me feel real cool. Uh, and the thing about it, shout out to Mike Hart, who was also in that video as well. Mike Hart had 242 yards in that game, or 221 rushing. But I talked to him recently, so shout out to Mike and that team as they prepare to start opening camp today. It's amazing to see that. You know, it's just one, one of those things that will live in lore that I didn't think much about after it was over. Now, I knew it kept us alive in the Big Ten. I knew we actually won the Big Ten that year because we were able to win that game. But, you know, out of sight, out of mind, game's over. I'm now in the NFL. But when I moved back uh, in 2014, you see the fans, and that's all they want to talk about. So I'm humbled. I'm honored. You know, that CBS would do that. But on the flip side, it tells me that we at Wolver Sports are doing something correct. Because the CBS, and shout out to CBS, thank you for that. They weren't posting that last year. They weren't posting that the year before that. They weren't posting that the year before that. It tells me that we're doing something right at Wolver Sports. We're getting it off the ground. We're getting out there. We're getting in the community. They pay attention. And also it tells me that the rivalry, mm -hmm. it means something again. It tells me that Michigan, Michigan State, people want to see that rivalry again. So that's why you see CBS, a, uh, a network and a broadcast that doesn't even cover uh, the Big Ten, but in terms of basketball. so Yeah, I just I thought it was cool because out of all the things that CBS Sports could wake up and tweet this yeah, morning, I, from it, the main humble. account, not the college football account, not the yeah. NFL account, not – from the main account was uh, the guy that I sit next to five days a week. It's still like it, it will always be humbling. Don't get me wrong. I talk a lot of smack, you know, off camera, but it's humbling. And I was able to go up to Michigan. You know, Coach Carr gave me an opportunity, gave me a chance to live out my dreams. My father played there. And then I was able to, you know, get in the starting lineup and be a part of something special. You know, back-to-back -back Big Ten champions, 03, 04, and just – you know, just be a part of that lore. When you mention Desmond Howard, and you mentioned Eric Anderson, and you mentioned Jared, uh, you know, Jared Irons, and you mentioned Chimunga Biakwa, Tuka Tyrone, Willie Stan, that was Butch Wolf, or, you know, and the, the, you on and on and on. Reggie McKenzie, like my name is somewhere in there. Like my name is somewhere in there, and I got some rings to prove it. So, yeah. No, I wasn't. Right. Now, I don't know about I, these drops he speaks of. I, I, I swear but to God, I, but I, I don't do, remember any of that. I, the first half I had about 80 yards, I did have a drop. But the thing that, the, the one for me that was the play that I had to shake off was I fumbled. I fumbled in the fourth quarter. Like, I fumbled legitimately at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and in my mind, I'm like, 
Come on, man. Come on, one. Like, you can't do that. Like, come on, one. So and funny. So, I don't remember any of Stick that. Stick remembers that. And that's the one I remember. Like, that's the one I was like, yo, you, you, you got, you have one second to shake that up. Like, that's what Soup told me on the sideline. Soup, Eric Campbell, my wide receivers coach, he's down at Bowling Green State right now. He said, yo, B, hey, you know he talks with that list. See it, see it, boy. See, you, see, you, got, see, you got one minute. You got to take it off. You got one second. You take it off now. Or it's, it's going to eat at you. It's going to be on you. It's going to stay on you. I was like, all right, Sue. That sounds it. like Mike Tyson, too. It's well, a good Tyson he's a impersonation. Guy, right? uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so funny. I still love those stories. The stories of that day, from even both sides, even uh, the Michigan side, before the win or before we were winning, and they were talking about what they were doing, and they left, and they left this hard, or what day that it, what the event was on, the Michigan State side. Now, their stories are hilarious. Hey, speaking of, uh, of Michigan, your time at Michigan, you will always bleed blue, but that doesn't mean you can't help an Ohio State guy out from time to time. I want to put this picture up if we could. Yeah, from, uh, from and, time to time. And I'm going to have you explain uh, what you're doing here with this 90-year-old Ohio State <laughs> fan? <laughs> What's going on there, Tom? So we um, went to Bowles yesterday. No, we went to Bowles Sunday night after uh, reception at Oakland Hills for the American Cancer Society. I went to Bowles, which is a cool little restaurant. It's right there on Maple and, uh, and Telegraph. And as we're walking in, this young man and his uh, granddaughter were walking out. And, you know, she noticed me. She recognized who I was and asked me would I take a picture with him. And he asked about Michigan. And he was a nice guy. And, I'm, of course, I'm a healthy guy, no problem. And I love the picture. And then after the picture, he proceeds to tell me, he said, you know, you know the Buckeyes are going to win this year. I said, I knew I should have tripped his ass when I first saw him. <laughs> no, but it's just a fun rivalry, man. The passion and the rivalry that never go away. You will never run into the opposition. And that's why I'm glad you can do it in a, in a cool and a chill space because, he still has that fire about Ohio State, and you know, I looked at him, and once he made that comment, it instantly went from me helping out, you know what I'm saying, an elderly individual. It went to, no, 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 no. Trash M talk. Michigan's going to bust that ass yet again. <laughs> so it's a great rivalry. At least it's a rivalry once again. So excited. Hey, speaking of fire, a, lot of, people, a lot of people believe uh, your ensemble today is fire. <laughs> talk about the teal piston horse's head. Uh, all that good stuff. Look, man, I'm back home. I'm on the air with my brother. I'm part of Wilbur Sports Network, and we love the city. We love our professional team. So, yeah, I'm trying. If I say I'm going to be on board, if I say I'm going to get on board, then damn it, I'm going to get on board. So, I'm here with the till. I wasn't a fan when I was younger because it reminded me of Fat Joe Dumars, Fat Terry Mills. <laughs> it reminded me of bunch John of, Voight. John Voight, a bunch of botched trades. I think Gary Long was in there at some point. It reminded me of the transition period from – the bad boys to the going to work Pistons, but with every bridge you gotta have, you know, you gotta have a bridge, you gotta have some downers. But Stack came in there, shout out to my brother Jay Stack, I was and he just talked about it and kind of made me go back. So here I am, I got the till on, I got the white shirt on with the Mustang. Hey, we're doing big things. Let me set up the show for you today. Coming up in about 15 minutes now, we'll talk to our Woodward Tigers guy, Rogelio Castillo. Raj will uh, give us the latest info on the trade deadline in Major League Baseball. Uh, the Tigers made a move last night. Robbie Grossman on his way to the Atlanta Braves for basically a bag of balls, but it is what it is. We'll get Raj's take on that. Uh, Juan Soto is on the move. He's going to the San Diego Padres. I mean, San Diego live at large out there uh, because they got to compete with the Dodgers, and that's not. And you got Machado easy to do. who's on pace right now to be NL MVP, you and got, Fernando Tatis coming back eventually. So um, yeah. we'll see. I want to ask about baseball story too. So the Milwaukee Brewers are in first place in the NL Central. They're three games up in the division and just traded away their All Star closer. I, I can't tell you I, I am so fired up about this yeah. I don't care about the future I don't care about it at all when you're three games up in August and you're trading away your all-star closer for whatever for what? reason it doesn't matter for what I it's you're you're clearly you don't care about this year and I don't know I, wanna, I want Rogers take on that we'll weigh in on that too yeah because my big thing is 
slowly but surely in sports, man, like each of the main four, you start to watch deals, mm -hmm. and you just wonder why would an organization, why would a franchise trade this guy? Why would they let this guy go? Why won't they match an offer that another team has put up if this guy is putting up numbers? If this guy's helped you get to a championship or win a championship or stay in in competition over the last couple of years, like you're seeing this in every sport, basketball does it. The basketball really does it the worst. Mm -hmm. MLB has done it. Football is even doing it now. Football was the one that kind of, you know what? You're not trading any main guys in football unless they're, it's something wrong with sure. the relationship that the player has with the front office or the player has with a coach, et cetera, or the coach has with the player. But now you're seeing it all the way around, all four major sports. It doesn't matter what a guy, like, I don't know who's safe anymore. Right. You don't know who's safe in sports. We'll talk to Corey Woods coming up top of hour number two. There was an injury out at Lions practice <sighs> today. Quintess Cephas goes down. Oh, not, we'll ask what Cephas. his uh, situation is. We'll get the latest with Corey Woods coming up top of hour number two. But next, I do want to delve into a couple of NFL topics. Uh, Braylon, first and foremost, I want you to have, have a chance to comment on Deshaun Watson. I'm going to ask you a different variation of this suspension. Uh, and it, it, it's, it relates to what the NFL does now right. because of all the outrage. So we'll get your take on that. Stephen Ross suspended uh, for tampering. <laughs> that news came out today. A whole lot of NFL lot of news to get to. That one, though. We'll do it next. But first, the message from Gypsy Vodka. As you see it on the desk every day, Gypsy Vodka is right there. And guess what's next to it as well? The Mulligan. That's right. Introducing the Mulligan. It is infused with corn distilled six time vodka by Gypsy. Amazing vodka. But guess what? It is so smooth. It is a seltzer. It is 8% alcohol, but you got to be careful because it is 8%. But you can have a lot of fun with it. It goes down smooth. Iced tea, lemonade, mango. They got it right. Adam and Mike support Michigan Distillers. It's the Dirty Mitten, baby. You got to support the Mitten. You got to support the hometown. The Mulligan by Gypsy Vodka. If you're going to drink it, make sure you drink responsibly. Detroit's downtown summer playground is back. Open all summer long, the Monroe Street Midway. Enjoy roller skating, free Wi-Fi, food trucks, art installations, and so much more. Don't forget to take advantage of the basketball court, putt-putt, and, of course, family programming all summer long. All art installations are done by Detroit artists, and it's a fun, safe event from people 1 to 100. Go to deckedoutdetroit.com. You don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers tan. With 26 locations in the Metro Detroit area and more coming, Chili Peppers Tanning is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the D. Join the Pepper Club for the best deals on unlimited tanning. Head to ChiliPeppersTanning.com. You just need a little Chili Peppers, man. We are the network for Detroit. By Detroiters. Welcome to the Woodward Sports Network. Welcome back, Woodward Sports Network. Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards. Stick is in for uh, Sam today. I can hear you, but I can't hear any music now. Are you playing music or no? Well, very good. <laughs> That's low. Low Fletch low. is in the house as well. We'll get Rogelio Castillo in. Our Woodward Tigers reporter coming up in just a couple of minutes. But I do want to hit on some NFL topics, Praylon. First and foremost, your reaction to the Deshaun Watson six-game suspension was what? I told you so. I told you so. Like I knew at the end of the day, when it relates to football, money talks and BS walks. If you look at the situation, six games is always usually a it's a it's a it's a safe bet to make. But then you also start looking at the schedule in depth. They set out a year last year with the uh, with the Houston Texans. Now, it wasn't mandated that he set out, but it kind of looked like it served as a sit out for what he was going through and what he was about to, to deal with in the courtroom. So he set out a year, then goes through this whole offseason and litigation he, in court twice. He was civil court. He's he settled. And all these now, the, the, uh, the NFL, they do their investigation. They have their, their middle person oversee this whole process. 
the big thing to prove is he won in the courtroom. And when I say he won, that just means he wasn't found guilty in the courtroom. So now you take the courtroom aspect off of it. He settles civilly, uh, civilly, but it's her word versus his word and her and his word versus her word. So I knew you couldn't suspend this man for another season inadvertently. I said, I figured six would be fine to put this thing behind them to move on because nice guys that aren't found guilty in the court of law, they tend to get leniency or nice people in general. He's a nice person. He wasn't found guilty in the court of law. So what are we really sitting here doing? What was her job really to do in terms of getting him a year? How would she, how would she be able to get him a year based off of he, didn't, he won in the court case, wasn't found, he wasn't convicted in the courtroom, wasn't found guilty, he's a nice guy, he comes off a certain way, like things like that. It's he say, she say, and it's hard to give him a year based on that. If they didn't find anything, they didn't find enough. Even with the six games, I don't think they found enough to give him six, but they had to give him something. So this is interesting here because looking further into the ruling, the ruling was based on the NFL's prior rulings as it relates to domestic violence okay. and sexual assault. So the judge in this case said she wasn't going to set precedent. Precedents. Mm. She wasn't going to suspend him for a year because that's not what the NFL a tasked her to do. They said within the guidelines, the NFL pushed this off to an arbitrator because they have been crucified for lack of penalties against uh, domestic violence and sexual assault acu uh, accused, right. even. Uh, because that's just, they don't penalize the same way those two things like they do betting and uh, drugs and weed and right. all that stuff. So she was sentencing within the guidelines of this. My question is, and I looked around today, and I looked around hard. I can't find one person who didn't think, besides you, because you called it, whether you agree with it or not, you yeah. called the six games. I could not find one person, NFL Network, ESPN, uh, uh, who's the girl that used to do the sports center from Detroit here? Jamel no, Jamel, Hill, yeah, Jamel Hill. Couldn't find anybody who thought that this suspension wasn't lenient. Outrage over right. the suspension that it wasn't much, much more than the six games. So my question to you is, the NFL Players Association was not going to appeal this six-game ruling, but the NFL had, from yesterday, three days yeah. to either accept the ruling or appeal. appeal it. Does the outrage by all of those national pundits, every single one of them, on the, again, on the NFL Network, ESPN, Fox Sports, everywhere. I couldn't find one person that said this was, uh, this was just fine. Do they appeal this ruling? Do they take it that step? Do they want this over? Uh, do they have plausible deniability? Hey, we pushed this off to an yeah. arbitrator, and that's what she said, and that's what we're going with. Or do they, I don't want to say cave, because that's not the right word, but for, yeah. the, for this argument, do they cave to the uh, public the pressure yeah. of it and, and appeal this ruling for more. No, they don't care. One thing is the NFL. If you haven't realized who the NFL is yet, then shame on you. The NFL cares about the NFL brand and shield, and that, that's what they care about. They're going to go for it because they know once gaming starts, everything else is forgotten about. Once success happens, everything else is forgotten about. The way the NFL looks at this story, he said all of last year, he said a whole season. Now, whether you say, well, it wasn't a, a penalty, it was a penalty because if none of this would have came out and he didn't ask to get traded, he would have played last year and he would have started for the Texans and he would have been on another bum team, but he still would have had 4,700 yards and nobody would have known about this. But he sits out a year, then now it's in the media from the start of last year throughout this offseason to which team is going to take Deshaun to HBO to uh, settling with some of them, to not settling with the last four. To, like, it's just dragged and dragged. What is Roger, uh, Roger Goodell and the commissioner going to do? What is the NFL going to do? Well, they've let the courts handle it. Wasn't found guilty. Two different uh, hearings. Two different hearings. Wasn't found guilty. They bring in an arbitrator. And the arbitrator, she listens. Now, she listened to four individuals. She listened to all 
26 or 27. Yeah, they brought right, her right. Brought, brought her five of the 24 cases. She right. threw one out, so she was ruling on uh, four. So they brought her in. She talked to four individuals about this process. She talked to Deshaun Watson extensively about in this process, talked to the Houston Texans in this process, who they're also suing. Uh, so it's, it's one of those things where why keep it going? If the NFL appeases to the masses and says, well, you know what? Because of the outcry by women, because of the outcry by everyone who's out crying, yeah, you know, we're going to go back now. We're going to make it a year. For what? Mm. Like, the NFL is like, look, we did our job. We, we let the courts handle it. They didn't do anything. We brought in the arbitrator. She said six games. It's time to play football. And they know what's going to happen is soon as the season starts, soon as you see what's going on with Les Ride and Denver, which is one of the silliest slogans of all time, soon as you see what's going on with Denver and Justin Herbert and the L.A. Chargers and Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers and this division and Tom Brady, and once the season gets going, this will be a forgotten about thing. He misses six games. And then once he comes back, their first game is against the Chargers. No, I mean it's against the uh, the Patriots, and then the Baltimore Ravens, and then it's against Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. Soon as he comes back, throw the first game has touchdowns, has yards. This is going to be a forgotten piece. If they do suspend him a year, now you have to drag it out extensively. Was that enough? You can never make everybody happen, right? I don't matter what you do, you can't make everybody happen. And in this situation, or you can't make everybody happy. And in this situation, you just got to say, look, we tried. We let the courts deal with it. We let the arbitrator deal with it. He set out inadvertently last year because of it. Look, man, it's time to make some money, and that's how the NFL is approaching it. The NFL has until 9 a.m. on Thursday to file a written appeal if they do not. Here's uh, one, Ryan. Let me ask you sure. this. Let me ask you this. If you are Roger Goodell and the powers that be, and you, and you sit above them, Roger Goodell, and you're listening, well, he doesn't. He's just a puppet. But and you're sitting there, and you're trying to figure out, do you appeal the case? Do you try to get more games because of the outcry if you're the NFL? And this is me asking you. No, I don't appeal the suspension. And I don't do it because you don't want this anymore in the news. You don't, you, if you're the NFL and as mean and as awful and as un. un insensitive yeah. as it sounds the nfl is about the shield roger goodell's uh one job is yeah. to protect that shield and you want this over as quickly as possible and if he appeals it this just drags out and but i do think he can say this i i, I think roger goodell should say this i'm listening in our next collective bargaining agreement we are going to drop the hammer on any of our players right. who are, uh, I don't want to say accused because that's, that's a really tough road to go and I'm not a, and the NFL PA would never go for that. Right. But you want to make it a very, very clear distinction that you will not stand for domestic violence, domestic violence and sexual assault. And these two game, four game, six game penalties that have been levied yeah. in the past, those days are over. I think you could make a really strong statement because I don't think six games is enough on one end, yeah. but on the other side, I don't think that you you want this over. This has been a year and a half long story right now, and I think you want it to end. The biggest problem with this is... When, if you're Goodell. The biggest problem with that is when everybody says domestic and sexual assault and et cetera, it's very different from a, a, a rule based up on based on a rule. Like when you're reading a rule book and it says you can't gamble, because everybody's over because they're talking about Calvin Ridley versus Deshaun Watson. The rule says you can't bet on the NFL. That's what the rule says. Now is the rule stupid? Yeah. There are a lot of dumb rules. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dumb rules at Goldman Sachs. You can't smoke weed. Right. We, everyone says weed should be legal, but guess where it's illegal? It's illegal. Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. So if you're working at Goldman Sachs and you get popped. Because you have weed in your system, you're saying, well, that's a dumb rule. It's a rule nonetheless. There's no gray area with yeah. that. Now, when you're talking about sexual assault and domestic, it gets to the point where there's, it, it's gray area. Who hit who? You know, not that it should matter. A man should never right. hit a woman. Never should a man hit a woman. Put his hands on a woman at all or, or harass it up. But it gets to the point. Did the man, did the woman beat the man up and then the cops got called? Like, what happened in this domestic situation? Was this harassment situation with, with uh, Deshaun Watson? 
What happened? Like ultimately, what happened? Yeah. Whether is there mental damage that you're trying to apparently he asked you to put his finger, I mean your finger somewhere, yeah. and you said no, but you felt a certain way about that. That's where the lines get blurred and it gets. Nobody was in that room, and this is the last thing I will say mm. about this. Bad people, bad stuff happens to them. Karma mm. is a karma is a bitch. Okay, so in this situation, he set out for a year. He got the big contract. He's got six games. If he really is a, a, a you know what? If he is a, a sob, if he really is a person that is mentally effed up and he's done some things to this woman, his time is going to come. Yeah, because you cannot be a son of a bitch and get away like that. Well, it is interesting that the judge put in her ruling that she recommends that Deshaun Watson's massages take place at the facility of the Cleveland Browns only with team personnel thought that was very curious um like it, it, that was i was like all right did did you say that out loud i mean, I mean like, it's, it's like and she's basically saying listen it's to to prevent yeah. him from searching out for his own massage therapist for him that aren't licensed right. by the way or reaching out to individuals or doing any 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 foolishness any 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 shenanigans you go to the line the, uh, in Berea, which I'm well familiar with, uh, in the Berea, Ohio. You have the professional that works with the team come there. That's where most of them do them anyway. Right. Till you build up your own relationships and they have them at the house. But I don't see a problem with that because obviously when he does it at his own house, when he's going to these young ladies' houses or their mama's houses, wherever the hell he was going to get these things, it seems like there's some indiscrepancies. So if you are the Cleveland Browns, I don't got a problem with that. It reminds and, me of the saying CYA. There you Cover go. yo ass. No and doubt. that's exactly what they're doing. It's Is that Mike C- working now? I think so, and I'm trying it now. I just want to throw oh, that comment man. out there. But back to regular program. Very good. There we go. <laughs> Sounding All right, good. guys, we're going to uh, talk to our good friend Woodward Tigers, Rogelio Castillo. We'll do it next. Raj talking about MLB trade deadline, 6 o'clock tonight. What are the Tigers doing? Do we expect them to make another move or not? What about baseball? Juan Soto off to San Diego. We'll do all that next. But first, a message from SMA. The sports marketing agency provides and spreads awareness about mental health as well as addiction and substance abuse. Their podcast, This is the F Word, helps spread awareness about fentanyl. Fentanyl is one of the most addictive, addictive things that we have in the state of Michigan as well as in the country. So what they do is they're just here to have a conversation. It's about mental health. It's about knowing it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm not all right, I, or I'm trying to figure out, or I have somebody that's not all right. They just want to have the confirmation. They do an amazing job of providing you with content, providing you with info, and it's on thesportsma.com. Thesportsma.com. Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. <laughs> Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. Three NBA championships. Detroit fans were there. 11 Stanley Cups. Detroit fans were there. Four World Series wins. Detroit fans were there. And uh, that one Lions playoff win in 1991. Yeah, Detroit fans were there. Woodward Sports, where the fans are. Man, we did it all last month with Big Frog giving away a Woodward Sports t-shirt. All you got to do is show up to Big Frog and Novi and just say, hey, I want my t-shirt, and you get one for free. It's that easy. It's right there in the Novi Town Center, so make sure you stop by. We did it all month of July, doing it again in August. Free t-shirts for anybody who wants to stop by Big Frog and Novi, and if you're looking to get t-shirts printed, they can do them in 24 hours. Take care of your team. Take care of your family. Family reunions coming up, back-to-school stuff, so make sure you go to BigFrog.com com slash novi today big frog big frog Ribbit woodward Ribbit. sports network ryan armani braylon edwards if you're watching on twitter or facebook we have ended those feeds or will end those feeds and we invite you to move exclusively over to our youtube page woodward sports like the show smash that like button and subscribe to Woodward Sports less than 400 subscribers away from the 30,000 milestone uh, of subscribers here to the network Uh, share the show, tell a friend about us, uh, get them to subscribe 
to Woodward Sports Network. MLB trade deadline is today, 6 o'clock tonight. Last night, the Tigers traded Robbie Grossman away to the Atlanta Braves for a pitcher. Um, forgot his name. Probably will never see the light of day uh, in Detroit. But they got rid of Grossman. Rogelio Castillo, Woodward Tigers are uh, the best beat baseball reporter yeah. in the city, my friends. If you're not on board yet, get up with Raj. Raj, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. Just waiting for something to happen here for the Tigers, and I, it's getting on almost 3 o'clock, and nothing's happening yet. All right, so Grossman gets dealt away. Your reaction was what? Eh, I, I mean, because I felt that they were going to make a way for Akil Badu to get some more at-bats and see what he's about. He has struggled since he's come up, and at putting Grossman out there because of his lefty splits, he does hit well against lefties. The Tigers were not going to get very much. So I was kind of surprised by the reaction of people yesterday saying, well, they didn't get a top 30 prospect. Well, everybody knows that you're training somebody who isn't that good. Of course you're not going to get a top 30 prospect back. So Chris, uh, Chris Anglin is a lefty, 20 years old, has been in a complex league. And what I saw so far, it's not – he's a complex league guy. He's out of high school. He's going to need time. So this is just – they just got a lottery ticket essentially. Somebody they could put out there and see what they could do with. But – uh, what what about the rest of the guys here? Is there a, a Soto is a guy, Fulmer's a guy, Jimenez is a guy, uh, plenty others in that bullpen up for grabs here, Raj. Uh, do you anticipate any of those guys to get traded away before the 6 p.m. deadline? I would expect at least Fulmer to be moved because he's a free agent at the end of the season. Um, I know that there's teams interested in Andrew Chafin, who can, has a player, uh, player option, so he can renew. But as far as Jimenez goes, I was seeing Cody Saberhagen at Athletic Report that they want a lot for Jimenez, who is in club control for another two seasons, and teams are not fighting on it. And Toronto just made a move to get Anthony Bass, and that was a team that was suggested for Fulmer and Jimenez possibly. But right now, the teams that need relievers are kind of running out. So unless Detroit gets blown away by an offer here I, for Jimenez or somebody like Soto, I see maybe Fulmer getting moved, but other than that, I don't see much else. What about Jonathan Scope? Same problem that was with Grossman because he has struggled so much. Defensively, he's a great bat, but I think the Tigers should have traded him last year. And I think that uh, if Scope, if the teams want something for Scope, the Tigers are not going to get what they want, which is an impact bat. So obviously, everybody is up for sale. Everybody is up for sale with the exception of Riley Green and maybe Spencer Torgerson. But for the most part, I believe everybody is up for sale. Does it even matter? Does it even matter if you're getting rid of guys or bringing guys in with the Detroit Tigers organization because they don't develop players? A lot of it, we talk about it. Maz is a big proponent about it. He talks about uh, Isak Paredes all the time, and I get it. Talk about other guys that have left and gone on to success, younger guys having success. It doesn't seem like they're hitting coaches. It doesn't seem like the coaches are developing the players. And it kind of happened at Michigan for a little while. Like Guys would come in as five stars early on in Jim Harbaugh's tenure, and they would finish the same because they weren't developing. Does it matter if we're bringing guys in, the guys with talents and studs, or a top 30 player or a top 30 prospect, if we can't develop them? I think in the case for pitching, it's different now than it was before because you see the Bo Briskies in the world. You see some of the pitchers. You've seen, for example, Jimenez a couple years ago was bad. He was walking people. He was not getting anybody out. But through the magic of Chris Fetter and the development squad, They've been able to make him a weapon, and he's been able to be effective, which puts him on the trade deadline. Alex Lang is a guy who was a starter in the minor leagues. The Tigers convert him to a reliever, and he's done a really good job. So for the first time, probably since the 80s, the Tigers have been able to develop pitching to a certain extent. Hitting-wise, that's where the problem is. And Paredes had his opportunity. He didn't do it here. He's still hitting 200 in Tampa. That, to me, is kind of like... That was the worst case scenario for the Tigers to happen, but he's still not a regular. So I don't, I don't know who won the trade, but it doesn't really matter because Breland, I think you, to your point, they can't develop hitters, and they still haven't been able yeah. to show that. Yeah, another question. I'm gonna take it outside of Georgia for two seconds. You see Juan Soto, the final finalizing a deal out there with the Padres. Like, how good does that make the Padres? One and then two. Why is it that teams can't seem to keep their stars? Why can't teams seem to have the loyalty and take care and protect their stars? I.e., the first thing that came to mind was Freddie Freeman with the Atlanta Braves and now Juan Soto with the Washington Nationals. 
the Nationals farm system's a mess, and they needed to find a way to replenish it because they haven't been able to, uh, since the World Series, have been able to do it really well. Uh, I wish that Soto would be a National for life. He rejected the deal, which I thought was fine because they were trying to back end the deal, and he felt insulted. Uh, I wish that it was easier instead of done, but when you demand top dollar for generational talent like he is, yeah. of course, you have to go and... I think that San Diego is very really smart to get him because in addition to getting Josh Hader last night for the Brewers, they set themselves up well for a postseason run with uh, another bat out there, and they got a pretty good bullpen now with Hader, and they gave up prospects because prospects, to me, are currency. I like that. Hey, Raj, I want to go back to something Braylon said about the Tigers. they will do a lot of MLB next segment. They, I don't want to gloss over that because I thought it was such an important point about the lack of development of hitters in this organization over the last eight years, for lack of a better way to say it. Derek Hill was just DFA'd yesterday, a former first-round pick. How much, and look, not all first-round talents are going to hit. They're just not. But because all of them have been bad here in Detroit, how much goes on the organization with Derek Hill? I think for Derek Hill, I we, we noticed his development when he was at Erie a couple years ago. They started hitting for more power. He started hitting, but he was seeking outside of the organization to get better help because his father used to play in the major leagues for the Dodgers. He was a minor league player. Um, I think that has a lot to do with Detroit not realizing what they ha- had there. And Derek Hill was injured. Let's just be fair here. He's had he had a surgery for a torn rotator cuff. He's had a lot of injuries, but I. The fact that here we are, he didn't play until 2020, and he was drafted in 2014. I mean, that was the last pick for Dave Dombrowski. It's an, it's an indictment that the Tigers, it took him that long to develop, and he had to seek elsewhere. That's, that's bad. It's, it's terrible. And what really bothers me about that is they had to make a decision where they could have gotten, I mean, people were asking about Zach Short or everybody else. But they clearly soured on Derrick Hill, putting him back down to Toledo when they had numerous opportunities. And that's just, it's frustrating because how are you not going to get at least, give me a two-war player. A two-war player is an average player. Give me that, and I'll be fine. Uh, talking to Rogelio Castillo, uh, you can follow him on Twitter <coughs> at Raj, R-O-G, Cast Baseball on Twitter, Woodward Tigers, Woodward Sports Network. Uh, Raj, final Tigers question. I'm going to have you answer it during the break or into the next segment, and then we'll do uh, go across MLB. Well, how is Al Avila still the general manager of this team? And you are out and about with the fans almost every night. I want to know what, what, what your conversations are with them and what they think of this baseball team and the direction of it. Because we're scratching our heads um, how he is still in charge of the Detroit Tigers roster. Uh, but first, a message from the Foling Warehouse. Yeah, that's right. The Foling Warehouse is here. You guys hear him? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. I did not hear you. I still don't hear you. Sorry, I still don't hear you. Yeah, Foley Warehouse is all going down. You know where it is. Oh, yeah, I don't uh, hear him. The one and only spot that you need to be at. It was invented here in Michigan, and it's all for you. Foley Warehouse, go check them out today. Life is full of hard yeah, choices. Heard We're enough. here to make one of life's biggest decisions as simple as possible. My name is Christina Gennari, and for over 20 years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and sell homes. We cover all of Metro Detroit and more, from large luxury homes to starter homes. We will work hard to make sure that you get the home of your dreams. So if you're in the market today or even thinking about buying or selling in the future, make the obvious choice. Christina Gennari, the obvious choice in real estate. Visit us at soldchristina.com today. Fellas, let's be honest. We like things to be easy. We like simple stuff, like sports seven days a week. We like things uncomplicated, like Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Sign in, sit down, watch your favorite team play. And before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's wicked awesome. Get a shot up. This is for the win. All of Detroit sports teams live on Woodward. All of Detroit sports coverage lives on Woodward Sports. Driving the best in Detroit sports coverage. 
All right, from now through August 31st, you can go down if you're 14 through 19 years old. You can go to Planet Fitness and you can work out for the free ball. I'm talking zero dollars, not nothing down. You can work out free all summer. It's part of the high school pass that is Planet Fitness trying to get our kids out of the house, into the gyms, having some fun, the social experiences, maybe even getting a job. Who knows when you go in there? You can walk in there without a job, walk out without a job, with a job. Go in there and have fun. It's the no judgment free zone. And also, you can go home and tell your parents, hey, mom, dad, by the way, it's only $10 for you to join, too. Sounds good. You got mom, pops, dad, sister. Everybody's going to Planet Fitness where your fitness is essential and getting it in. And adults, that's what I said. $10 is not a lot of money. Get only down. $10? Hey, man, only $10. Go down oh there and get gosh. in shape mentally and physically. Look good, feel good, work good, play good, all of the above. Planet Fitness where your fitness is essential. Right back here on Woodward Sports with our good friend Rogelio Castillo on Twitter at Rajcast Baseball, part of our Woodward Tigers team. Uh, and, and really, I, I think the most knowledgeable guy going right now. I mean, the, the ins and outs, uh, he's there. Raj, we love you. We think the world of you. So how is uh, Alavila still in charge? You know, I, I think that right now, at the end of the season, they're going to evaluate, and some change is going to have to be made. But honestly, <laughs> there's been jokes on Twitter and, and jokes in our Discord about does he have pictures on somebody or something or another. But in all seriousness, I think the reason why he's in charge is because he made, he's made all these decisions this year, and a lot of them you can say, okay, well, injuries have played a factor with Meadows. You can they uh, with some of the trades not working out or uh, the, the bias signing, which has been a very – he leads the league in errors now. Um, so he did all the right things, but they haven't worked out. That being said, however, the development side of things, you're here having to call Brian Garcia to start a game. He's a reliever. And so I think the depth he didn't have, has not addressed, and I think the reason why he still has a job is because, quite frankly – Who's going to take over right now? If they're going to spend money, they have to spend money to get a big GM. If there's somebody eternal, great. But who? That's the question. And I think they're trying to figure that out right now. Here's a loaded question, but, you know, it's one since I have you and I know how good you are. And you said, Nick, I can ask you on air so that people can hear it. Where do the Tigers go from here? Like, where do the Tigers go from the hills of last year? We saw how the season ended, so it gave us hope. And maybe that was false hope. Maybe we shouldn't have been so happy. But it gave us hope. We saw the moves that were made in the offseason. Eduardo Rodriguez, Javi Baez, like you just talked about. Tucker Barnhart, uh, catcher. We saw those moves. You're happy for Torkelson, happy with Riley Reed. Then Riley goes, I don't want to steal your thunder, but where do they go from here? It's None of it seems to be working. Where do the Tigers go after the season full pitcher? Well, I think you look at Eric Haas as the last month. He's batted over 300. He has proven that he's – the Tigers are actually over 500 when he starts catching. And so I think giving guys like Eric Haas an opportunity to say, hey, you're, you're with us, um, and look at what they have in their system right now. I mean, Kerry Carpenter has been hitting really well in Toledo. Is he a guy? I, I don't know, but until we give him an opportunity, yeah. we will not know. Um, and just see – evaluate what you have currently because they have to make some Rule 5 decisions. Parker Meadows, who's down in Double A, has to be decided. You have Winsteel Perez. There's other players that have to figure out what they're going to do with. So I think just putting it out there at this point, what do you got to lose? You're almost 20 games under 500. See what you have in your system, and, and go from here. Braylon, honestly, just take what you have, and then weed out the garbage. Yeah. If, if there's guys not producing, get rid of them. We talked about the Soto trade earlier, and I'm happy he's not going to L.A. I, I, I don't think or I don't know how the Dodgers could have gotten another superstar like that. So I'm happy he's going to San Diego, not L.A. I wanted to ask you about Josh Hader. If you're a Milwaukee Brewers fan waking up this morning, Ooh. you've got a three-game lead in the NL Central Division, and your general manager and owner just traded away your all-star closer. Why are we even playing the games if you're going to just take a pass on a season in which you're in first place? They looked at the money savings part of it, and that's the sad part, Ryan. They're like, well, hey, we got Devin Williams. You can do the same thing. And it's ridiculous. The Brewers have an opportunity here in a bad division. The division this year, the NFL is crap yeah. to me. It's not a good division outside of St. Louis. That to me is just saying, look, we care more about the bottom line. I mean, Oakland has a payroll now of $35 million. $35 million. There's guys, Max Scherzer gets paid more than that in his annual salary. 
So to me, that's just saying, hey, we care more about the, the bottom line here. We're saving a little bit. And, we, and their PR statement, I thought, was kind of like, if you read through the rhetoric, it's just nonsense. They did get a closer back today. But nonetheless, let's be honest. If I was a Milwaukee Brewers fan yeah. this morning, Braylon, I would never go to another game. I know. At least for the season. I know a Milwaukee Brewers fan. He's a fan. I mean, he's a friend. Wrong word. He's a friend. And he works with Over Sports Network. Chris Prince, beer Chris man. Chris Prince, beer man, is a Milwaukee Brewers fan. If I was him, I'd take my hat off. I wouldn't be wearing my Brewers hat like he wears. I, I don't understand this, and it's kind of why I asked the question. What is it? In, and baseball is probably the worst at it. They do another sport. But they just let go of stars for small decibel numbers or let go of players that have put them in position to be in, I mean, to be in uh, contention for World Series, to be consistent playoff runs, to be there, to lead the division. They get rid of guys for nothing like Soto. Freeman last year. Talk about the pitcher from uh, the Milwaukee Brewers. Hater right now. Like it happens so much in baseball where that bottom line that needs to change because whoever's advising these idiots, he's an idiot himself. I mean, it's embarrassing for baseball too. I think. Yeah, it's, it reminds me of when the when the when the Athletics used to be in Kansas City, and the Yankees in the early '60s would just trade to them all the time. I mean, the, the Yankees use some of these teams as farm teams. Right. The current one would be the Pirates. They've always, they always trade with the Pirates. The Pirates have more talent out there than the Tigers do that used to be Pirates that have done great elsewhere. Garrett Cole comes to mind. you got Josh Bell now who's going to San Diego. All these guys, the Pirates had at one point, and they were like, as soon as it comes up to arbitration, they're like, nah, you know, screw it. We're gone. They're, we're going to save money. It's, it's – <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, I can't do it. it. It pisses me off the same yeah. way. Because here I am, the most electrifying baseball player right now. It's not named Aaron Judge, and I know what he's doing. And, in fact, this guy could be the most electric player ever when it's all said and done. Meanwhile, Shohei Otani won't be an angel in a year. How the hell do you lose Shohei Otani? I don't get baseball. How do you lose with Shohei Otani and Mike Trout on your team? Because you have zero pitching development. Yeah, pitching. Yeah. It's trash. Yeah, they're pitching. They – Ryan, it was so bad last year. All their picks last year were pitching. All 20 of their picks were pitching last year. It's it, crazy, It's, it's man. embarrassing. It yes. is. Uh, Raj, we appreciate it. Follow uh, his Twitter, at RajCastBaseball, uh, for the latest on the MLB trade deadline coming up 6 o'clock, uh, about 3 hours and 13 minutes from now. The MLB trade deadline hits. Uh, and stay tuned to uh, Woodward Tigers as well. For the latest with this miserable baseball team. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thanks, oh my guys. God. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. It's tough. We're going to talk to Corey Woods coming up top of the hour. I do want to get to the other big NFL story of the day, Uh-oh. and that is Steve. Uh, we are back live. I apologize for that delay, um, but we will continue on with the show. Let me tell you about Les Stanford Chevrolet. It is no secret that new cars are hard to come by, but they are available at Les Stanford. Allocation coming in for lease or purchase of new vehicles. Les Stanford has also 300 pre-owned cars on their lot right now. All makes, all models, all years. Some with less than 500 miles on them. For more. Visit LesStanford.com, LesStanford.com, find new roads. Want to get to the other NFL story of the day. The NFL has stripped the Miami Dolphins of a 2023 first-round pick. They have fined Stephen Ross $1.5 million uh, for tampering with Tom Brady and Sean Payton. We talked about that story. Uh, They have also, by the way, suspended... Stephen Ross, until October 17th, he is to have no contact with the team. It is a six-month investigation that was levied, allegations levied by former head coach Brian Flores. And this was about the tampering with Tom Brady and uh, Sean Payton. And remember the stories that we, we talked about that, that, you know, Tom Brady, the only reason he retired from the Bucks to begin with is because he thought he and Sean Payton were going to go on this mega deal to Miami. Right. And then Brian Flores' comments came out about the allegations regarding Stephen Ross and tampering and, and the uh, alleged payments of $100,000 yeah. for losses. And then Brady back to, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, that blew up that aspect of it as part of this investigation it is worth pointing out 
that the investigators found tampering violations of an unprecedented scope and severity. That's what Roger Goodell said. I know of no prior instance of a team violating the prohibition on tampering with both a head coach and a star player to the potential detriment of multiple other teams. Now, as for those juicy $100,000 cash payments yep. that were allegedly offered to Brian Flores for every loss. The investigation found that that offer of $100,000 for every loss uh, was a differing recollection about what the wording, timing, and context was not intended to be taken to be a serious offer, nor was the subject pursued in any respect by Mr. Ross or anyone else at the club. Um, so they completely dismissed that allegation uh, as he said it, but he wasn't serious. So uh, there's that. That's BS. That's 100 percent BS. First of all, he said it was for tampering at an unprofound level, like, but um, pro, uh, uh, the severity of the tampering that they found in the uh, the investigations was at an all-time high level. I've never seen anything like that. It's just that money talks and and BS walks. Now before I go that route. Stephen Ross is a University of Michigan guy. You know what I'm saying? He's an individual that I know. He's an individual that my father knows. So we know him. He's an amazing man. Now, separating that from this, Brian Flores came out and says that's what happened. They came out and said that's what happened. But oh, it was just jokes. That's not really how it happened. He got fined. <laughs> he got suspended to October 17th. What the hell does that mean? He's not, a, he's not an owner. He's not a coach. I mean, he's not, a, he's not a coach. He's not a player. Who cares if he's there to October 17th? It doesn't matter. They find a $1.5 million. It's a drop in the freaking bucket for him. Yeah, for what it's worth, Brian Flores did come out in a statement saying that he was disappointed that Ross will, quote, will avoid any meaningful consequence. So, so again, he, he's away from the team until October 17th. He got he, he got just as this many games as he got just as just many Sean games Watson. as Deshaun Watson. This isn't even and this isn't even a slap on the face or a slap on the wrist. Like this is some serious stuff. You got one guy, a former head coach, happens to be a black head coach who happens to he's never getting the job again, by the way. He'll, it doesn't appear to be that way. He'll never be a head coach again. And he's only in the NFL right now because Mike Tomlin went after him. Mike Tomlin put him on the staff. He'll never get a job again because he was telling the truth. Yep. Meanwhile, this guy gets to keep his team. He gets a slap on the wrist, 1.5, and I get it. I understand it. He has a lot of money. has a lot of power. NFL doesn't want to piss off a guy like that. His construction in New York, he runs the city. I get all that. But this is BS at all time. Tom Brady came out and said it was true. Hey, Tom look. Brady came out and said it was true. We know this to be true. Meanwhile, they didn't talk about the other stuff that was going on. The, the throwing the games, which also, if you think about what they're doing in terms of being in bed with sports books, and he's telling this guy to tank games. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't really mean that, Brian Flores. You and Brian Flores ain't that cool to where y'all cracking jokes and y'all kicked it. He was like, man, I give you 100000 for losing. Nah, man, I'm just BSing. No, what you said, you meant, and he took it the right way. And now this is how he respond. I'm not mad, but this is the power vacuum, and it's the world we live in, because you know he said those things. You know there was tampering at an all-time high. The NFL knows, and the NFL's like, what are we going to do, take the team from him? He's like, look, here's $1.5 million, lose a couple draft picks, and we'll see you October 17th. Keep enjoying your 290-foot yacht while you're waiting. What What is the show, What what is the name of our show? The bottom line. Let me tell you what the bottom line is. Tell me, Ryan. If you go up against it, a billionaire, you're going to lose. Period. End of story. It's just the way it is. And to a large extent, the billionaire that continues to win is Dan Snyder. Yeah. If you can't get Dan Snyder... You're not getting anybody. Zero. Yeah. You will never get... A billionaire if you can't get Dan Snyder. Because we know he's a real piece of work. Everybody that's worked with him has said, has said that. Different allegations. I'm talking about just completely different allegations. It's not like you're getting one consistent thing with Dan right. Snyder. You're getting a multitude of things when you're in that culture that is the Washington Commanders now. But just going back to Stephen Ross, and I'm just disappointed from this standpoint. The individual comes out and says this is what's going on. 
everybody says no that can't be what's going on then um, then then one of the most beloved people ever tom brady because when he retired the people that hate him they're gonna love him as Who well will face no penalty oh 100 he moonwalked out of that but it is what it is he came out and said he did it you guys know this guy did it that's why hugh jackson mm-hmm. walked back his comment he said look you know what i don't even care no more i'm at grambling nothing can happen blah, but, blah, but 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 again and it takes a special person. Yeah. It takes a special person to have that conviction to go up against these guys. Because at 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 Brian Flores' yeah. great detriment, he most likely will not become never. a head coach again. I'm not going to say never no. because I'll leave the window open, although I do think that door is slammed shut. But you got to have a conviction unlike any other because – you're gonna lose. But this is what happens though, and, and this is and I guess I can take this to other genres, other you know, other things. This is what happens and this is why people when they when something happens or someone says something or they see something and someone does something, that's why people don't say nothing. Yep. That's, that's why people mind their business. And it's been something my people have done for a long time. We like, yeah, but we ain't see nothing. Hey, it is what it is. We ain't see nothing. But the first time somebody wanted to come out and take that leap and Brian Flores and say, you know what? I did see something. I did hear something. Something was presented to me by someone you know, by one of the 32 owners. Let me bring to you what was said. Let me bring to you what he tried to do to try to take the game into a negative place, to try to take the game and cheapen it by trying to lose on purpose. Let me bring this to you, this information, and let's see what you, the masses, do with it. Let's see what you, the NFL, uh, has done with it. And the NFL came back and said, well, you know what? We found out that he was just joking when he said it, so here's 1.5 and, you know, a couple games missed. Like, really? Like, that's why people don't say anything, and that's why we don't get anywhere. Because when you come out, you say something that happened, you know it. Like, you, he came with the facts, the stats, the knowledge, the dates, the times, the places, matter. the where. Even Tom Brady came out back to his story. And it doesn't matter. So this is why people get quiet, and this is why this has been going on in the NFL. Not, this has nothing to do with black. This has to do with the little BS that goes behind closed doors with the NFL. It's going on since at least What did I tell you about uh – uh, Roger Goodell, in, as, as it relates to Deshaun Watson, his number one job is to what? Protect the shield? Protect the shield. Apply that to this story as well. Um, guys, we're going to stick with the NFL. There was an injury out at Lions practice today. We'll uh, get the latest uh, from Corey Woods. We'll do that next. Injuries. But first, uh, a two message. Injuries. Two injuries. But uh. first, a message from Lady Jane's. Come to Lady Jane's for an award-winning haircut experience and register for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win the car of your dreams from Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Open seven days a week. Walk in any time. No appointment necessary. It's wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Hey, it's Scott from the Bet Show. Hey, it's MLB trade deadline day. What an exciting day. Who got better? How does it affect the futures betting in MLB? So listen, you guys got to check us out at 430 at the Woodward Bet's YouTube page. You also got to check out OddsTrader.com. It's got live scoring, play-by-play updates, and it's the best place to check all the odds at the sports books right in the palm of your hand. Hey, let's get to some winners. That's what we want. Fun coupons. So listen, I'm rolling with Corbin Burns and the Brewers today, minus a run and a half. Brewers have won seven out of eight starts for Burns. Sounds good to me. OddsTrader.com, Woodward Bets. Check it out. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. OddsTrader.com. It's an almost site for your game day bets, play by play updates, live scores, and the best price on every game for multiple sports books. That's right, I say it every day in here because it's true. Doesn't matter what you want to bet on, what sports you want to bet on, you want to bet on this, you want to bet on that. Well, come to oddstrade.com because they got all the best bets, all the comparable bets. They're time to get you some money. Frankly put, I, I think myself, they do it the best. For the best, you go to the best, and that's oddstrader.com. Dot com. All right, welcome back, Woodward Sports Network. Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, thanks for being with us here on a Tuesday afternoon in the city of Detroit. 
uh, Fletch and Stick here today in for Sam Flannel. Uh, let's bring him in. Uh, Corey Woods, he's been with us each and every day so far. We're going to keep him working with us each and every day moving forward, too. Yep, Corey, cool. how you doing, my friend? Pretty good. How you guys doing? I do not good. hear you. You got your mute on? Can you guys hear me now? There, there we, we go. go. Yes, yes, sir. All right. Sorry about that. Oh, no, that's, that's all, all right. Good, hey, Corey, break it down for us. The injuries today. Uh, Quintess Cephas. Uh, everybody talking about that one. Uh, needed help off the field. Damn. Yeah, Quintess, he caught a nice pass over um, Jeff Okuda. He, he was like, yeah. it was a remarkable catch. He, just, he went up in the air. He really showed his athleticism. And when he came down, he just did not get back up. He was just laid out for a quick second. And he had to be helped off the staff by the coaches. Well, he had to be helped off the field by the coaches. So it was um, it was a real unfortunate situation. Any so, update on that? A a any no, um, severity? Anything like that? <laughs> well, bless you. Ooh. Thank you. Um, none of the coaches <laughs> spoke after. <laughs> none of the coaches spoke My after bad. the after the uh, practice. So what they um, I pretty much we're going to find out probably more in the morning on what happened with them. Uh, <laughs> my apologies. I'm in goofy mode right now. Let me ask you a question about Lee McGill. Uh, talk about that. Obviously, he was one of the guys listed in the top 10 players that are going to break out this year. We just found out he went down as well. Uh, any news on that? He went down, but, you know, he was he was able to go ahead and finish our practice. So he said that he was good. Um, so Aleem is, Aleem is fine. He just, he just okay. I guess he, he collided with some bodies and he went down, but he, he was able to go ahead and finish our practice. It's so funny, you know, like when I was on the space of the, the football side, like guys bump into each other all the time, little tweaks, have all this stuff happens. Yeah. But now on this side, as I'm trying to learn how to cheer for the lines, I'm like, what happened? What? He, he, he did what? He went down. What? So now I'm like, now I'm into it. But let me ask you a question. I heard that uh, Aiden Hutchinson moved inside. They said he was playing last year. They, ah, yeah, said he was doing some stuff. Tell me about that inside move because uh, – Coming out, I always said that I looked at him more like J.J. Watt as opposed to T.J. Watt because J.J. never leaves the field, and that's why I see for Aiden. What would you see with the inside move? Well, you know, in the first couple of days, he had some trouble. I mean, you know, he got put on his butt by T.J. Um, T.J. Hawkinson, and then, you know, um, then, you know, he had some problems with Sewell. But today, he really got after it. You saw him really just play whistle to whistle. And, uh, you know, Dan Campbell talked about that earlier today. Like, he's like, that Aiden's a guy that, you know, he'll have a bad moment, but he's not going to keep on having those moments. He's going to learn from it and quickly recover. And you see it. And you really saw that today. He was just really physical and really aggressive throughout the entire practice. And then, then the thing that I really liked after practice is that he looked like he was working on trying to get off the ball quicker. So he, he, he it looked like he's self-aware knowing that, hey, I – I had a kind of rough go at the first day, even even a little bit today. I'm going to go ahead and put in some of the extra work after practice. Corey, just piggybacking off that real quick. Uh, is that something that bothers you? Is that something that you yourself are worried about considering? You draft Aiden Hutchins, number two overall. There are questions about has he reached his ceiling, getting drafted, and now you see a move like this where he's struggling on the outside. Now they move him inside, and it's looking like he's working. Are you worried or just like, ah, eh, he's just a young guy figuring out in camp? Just a young guy figured out. I'm not worried at all because he, because he, he, he's looked better than he's looked worse. So like I said, he's had some moments, but I think it's just just some growing pains. I think that he's going to go ahead and figure it out because when he's looked good, he's looked damn good. Okay. Talking yeah. to Corey Woods, you can follow him on Twitter at Corey E Woods. Corey with a K, of course. Our Lions uh, beat reporter, Woodward Sports Network. Um, Corey, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was this. Competition. You talk about Aiden Hutchinson and and Panay Sewell. We've seen some videos of them going back and forth. Uh, amongst everything that you see at training camp, how active is that one on one battle? Looks nice. I mean, it's it's looking at. It's kind of weird to look at it. You know, I want to say weird, but it's like Aiden's athleticism going up against Panay's strength. It's like almost like a, a clash of the giants. And so far. Got to go ahead and give the edge to. You know, I don't want to say. I don't want to say you can give the edge to Sewell because even though this last week, um, Aiden was able to get by him a couple of times. I mean, even again, it was it was no pads. But I mean, we're really starting to see the the, the genesis of it right now. I want to see how it continues to grow throughout the rest of the week. But it's just like a clash of the titans almost. <laughs> So what outside of that, what has been something good? What is something, uh, I don't want to say secretive, but what's something unsung? What's something you noticed that the people out there, give them a little inside take to uh, to Allen Parker, something that you've seen where you're like, oh, man, this might be something to keep an eye on, whether it's good or bad. 
Jared Goff, um, just his consistency, just the way that he's looked in practices, the way he's been throwing the ball, it's just night and day different than this time last year. That's what I'm comparing it to. It just looks like he has a real command of the offense that him and Ben Johnson are working on. So that is the real big takeaway. Everything else, I'm, I'm not going to front today's practice. Um, it was okay. It was, you know, I think they're, you know, trying to really ramp it up a little bit more. Um, a couple of things did look like you know, a little sloppy, no, nothing too terrible. But I'm curious to see how they keep on, you know, progressing moving forward. But just to me, the real person that has been eye popping is um, Jared Goff, at least on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, yeah. Did you see DJ Chark Speed is there as well? And uh, if you want to go to the defensive side of the ball? A guy that has. Um, I guess he's sticking out, and maybe not for the greatest reasons. I would say it would be Jeff Okuda. Um, you see, he's, he's looking healthier. Um, he doesn't look like he, the injuries hamper, hurting him as far as practicing, but it looks like he's still trying to go ahead and get that speed back up because even today I saw Josh Reynolds get with him a couple of times. Hey, Corey, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, you know, I watch that press conference every morning um dan campbell every morning uh meets with the media i watch it and i think it's the third day in a row he has referenced malcolm rodriguez as really a guy that he is so happy with um put the pads on and you know he, he called uh, some of these guys pajama warriors that they're so good when the pajamas are on but the, when you put the pads on that's where you find the real men and he just continues to elevate Malcolm Rodriguez. Well, what do you see out of him? Just pure intensity, playing snap to snap all over the field, and you know, just looks like he has a real sense of what the the, the coaches are asking out of out of him. Um, he's really just getting after it every time that the that that the whistle um, is just blown. I mean, and the one thing that I will say about Malcolm Rodriguez is that he looks in damn good shape. And he looks just like one hell of an athlete, something that they do need because I would say the linebacker position is like one of their, I mean, it's one of their glaring weak spots. It has been for, you know, a couple of years. So right now they're looking at him as a guy that can possibly, who knows, maybe he could play his way into starter or significant playing time. It's hard to say, but he's going out there and he's giving everything that he got and the coaches are loving him. I mean, Dan was talking about his physique back during OTAs and mini camps. They're talking, they were talking about him again the other day, him, and Aaron Glenn is his guys they were looking and can't wait to see get it passed. Now you're hearing about him once again. So he's just going out there and making the most of every time he's in there. You, you see him taking snaps with the first team. So he's just a guy that's taking a season to season a moment. I know how it is, uh, Corey, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, trying to get that chemistry. Guys are out because of injury. Guys are nursing themselves back, be it, be it, be it PUP, be it just getting back in there. So I'll wait till next week to ask you more about the progression yeah. of the Lions. Like, do they look like they could be a team that wins that over with the six and a half? So I'll wait on that. But I want to ask about one more player, Jamal Williams. Like, this guy is he's a breath of fresh air. Like, he is... He is just, like, funny as hell. I saw the Macho Man imitation yesterday. I know you and I are big wrestling guys, so that was great. Like, how does he look going into camp, obviously knowing that DeAndre is the guy, but he's a guy that's right there, too. How does he look so far? Jamal Williams looks great. It's actually interesting that you asked me that you asked me about Jamal Williams. I have a story going up to Wilbur Sports. Um, it'll be up either sometime later today. I got to finish transcribing it, but last night, I talked to Coach Luke Neal. Um, Luke Neal is Jamal Williams' uncle and his trainer. Because I, because I don't know if you guys see me on Twitter. I said that Jamal Williams looks noticeably smaller. And when I was talking to Coach Neal, he was saying that Jamal plays, try, has been playing before at the two around two twenty four to two twenty eight. And over the summer, they've been they trimmed him down. So he's going to be going into the season two seventeen. And I mm. asked him, how does that affect his power? And he said, I believe that he's going to be even more powerful, even more explosive, because we took away some of those top heavy muscles and got and got a more muscular everywhere. So I was saying I'm not looking, I thought he looked noticeably leaner because he wasn't a big guy last year, a fat guy, but I thought he looked leaner. And that's what Coach Neal said. They, they've been they worked on getting his um, quickness and agility out there because when he was a rookie, he won like the one of the, I believe he won with the, the, the Packers rookie MVP and he had the um he had like a 153 carries for like a like close to uh, close to 600 yards which is almost identical to what he had last season with the lions so he's looked good out there i thought that he looked quicker and coach neil validated that's why he looked quicker they've, they've been working on his physical training 
And I got a couple other nuggets that he said about last night. I don't want to give you everything. Uh, Corey, I wanted to ask you, final thing from me. Um, whether it's Will Harris, Jeff Akuda, corner, whether it's uh, you know wide receiver, whether it's defensive line, there seems to be linebacker. There seems to be competition at a lot of these different roster spots. Legitimate competition, not to the point where it just. I mean, it's up for grabs. This roster seems to be as talented as it's been in quite some time. Can you just talk about that aspect of it, the competitive nature, uh, guys fighting for their NFL lives? Excuse me. They're not, that's the thing. They're not fighting for their NFL lives. They're fighting to play for the Lions because a lot of these guys that get cut, they're not going to be out of the league. They're going to latch on somewhere else. Whereas in years past, if you don't make the Lions, you're done. You can really just sense right now at Allen Park that it is a competition. All of those guys are really bought into not just Dan Campbell. They're bought into Ben Johnson. They're bought into um, Antoine Randall-L, Deuce Staley, Aubrey Pleasant, Aaron Glenn, um, Haley. They're, they're bought into the entire concept of what this team is trying to be. So what I mean by that is because they're bought in, they're all trying to play for the Lions, just like you said. They're all trying to go ahead and get after that spot. So you sense guys like – they're all cool. They're, the, the camaraderie is there. They're all trying to make, you know, iron sharpens iron, make sure that each guy is doing well. But they're also trying to get after it. Um, one battle that I believe is going to be really interesting is on that D line. I'm just curious to see how that turns out. And I'm also curious to see about that corner, that cornerback two slot because it's already been said that Will Harris and Jeff Okuda are going to be competing to play opposite of Amani. So those are two things that I'm looking at. And I, if I had to say right now that somebody that might have the edge on that, it could be Will Harris. Granted, he has some issues last year at safety, but right now at, at the, um, the cornerback's not something that is a little bit new for him. He's holding his own. So the competition is there. Everybody has a chance to really get after it. I believe, obviously, we know the only person that is not competing for his job is Jared Goff. So... Sounds good. Corey Woods, follow him on Twitter, yes, at sir. Corey E. Woods. Also, our Woodward Sports uh, handle. Uh, Corey's out there practice every day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Corey, thanks so much, my friend. Yeah. Hey, Corey, man, get you some uh, leave for those allergies, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's Allegra. The oh, leave is for the muscles. I know all about this stuff. Yeah, that's just eye drops at Corey. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, we are going to take a break. Uh, lots of that Lions news. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, I wish the best for Quintez Cephas, man. Yeah. Uh, out with a broken collarbone last year and uh, apparently landed awkwardly on his leg and holding the knee. So we'll see what happens. That's tough, man. I was thinking about it. We talked about it. You said one thing for the Detroit Lions going into training camp, the one thing we want to keep an eye on was his injuries. You know, talking about keeping everybody healthy this year. They were one of the teams that kind of had some injuries last year. So I hope everything's all right with him. Seems McNeil will be okay, but damn, man. If it happens to a Quintez two years in a row, I'll be hurt. More uh, here on Woodward Sports momentarily, but first a message from Chili Peppers Tanning. Yeah, Chili Peppers Tanning, it is here, and it is for you. The hottest bulbs, the hottest deals, the hottest tans, and, of course, the Pepper Club. They got a couple right here on Woodward or one right near your house. So if you're looking for that deep, dark, beautiful tan, make sure you go Chili Peppers Tanning. Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. <laughs> Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. Hi, I'm John from Better A Mortgage, and to me, family is more than blood. That's why I'm the biggest family in Metro Detroit. If you're looking to buy a house or refinance and need a loan, come get treated better than family by me and our entire team here at Better A Mortgage. We pride ourselves on giving you better advice, better service, and a better loan experience. That's why we are Better A. If you're looking for a new mortgage, come get treated like family. Actually, better with Better A Mortgage. Visit us at mybetterate.com or call at 248-480-4467 today. Make sure you're listening to Woodward Sports all day long. Start your morning with the Morning Woodward Show. Spend middays with Big D Energy. 
Watch and listen your drive home with the bottom line. And don't forget about Woodward Bets Daily. All live, live. all right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Ooh, let me tell you about the ciabattas. That's that's that, that's my best uh, Christopher Walken impression. Ciabattas, they're delicious. <laughs> hey, you you eat them. I and I haven't had that. lunch today, so there's one place that I'm going to head to oh, right wait. when the bottom line is over. There's a big boy right by my house in Southfield, and I'm going to get that chicken cordon bleu sandwich with my free fries and Pepsi. You should do the same today. Make sure you hit up big boys. They got ciabattas right now, baby. Go get them at big boy. It's funny. Hello. That was a good in pads today. Get a little physical, right? Oh, yeah. Obviously, first day in pads. There's some things to clean up, and uh, the weight was a little heavy today. I got to get used to that again. But overall, it was pretty good. That's I, all I got to say. Why'd you have to do Jeff like that in the open field? <laughs> Who? No, Buddha. Him out. Oh, I did. <laughs> nah, I did. I don't know. That's just football. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I got to go watch some film. Can you talk about this? How much more comfortable you feel from year one to year two? I just like what, what, how, how much, how, how different does it feel this time around? Oh yeah, it feels a lot different. I'm more comfortable out there. Uh, I know the system. Uh, every, I know B, I know Jonah, I know Dak, and I know Frank. So that chemistry too, it just makes makes my job way easier out there. I know what to expect. The speed is way slower. Everything's not coming at me a thousand miles an hour. Every, everyone's just, yeah, everyone's normal speed, and uh, I like it. It will go at all change by year. Whoa, we're slow down. I was saying, do your goals, with that being said, do your goals at all for the year change at all? Like, do you have higher goals going into this year at all? Uh, yeah, uh, obviously, I just want to be the best I can. And that's both technically and physically and mentally. Uh, I have that in my own notebook. I don't like to share it, but yeah. We got done time. Thing one with Penae Sulmark there, you know, you just you gotta love that guy. Yeah. That guy Good breathes. Pick. Great pick. That's a hell of a pick. That's a great pick. That guy breathes football. That guy wants to be the best that he can be. He's gonna be dope, man. He's cool, he's playful. But one thing he's not, he's not playful with those hands on the field, so he's gonna be a monster out there. But you talk about taking that next leap. You talk about year one and year two. You talk about taking that leap. And you guys have asked me about it before, and I said, it's not that individuals in the NFL are faster than the guys coming out of college because Jamison Williams is faster than almost everybody in the NFL with the exception of Cheetah. And to be honest, when he gets fully healthy, I like to see them put that money on the line. But it's not that. It's just individuals in this league already that are veterans, they study more tape than you do coming mm -hmm. out of college. They know the plays. They know their teams. They have the chemistry like he just talked about. He said, I know Frank. I know Taylor. I know those guys now. We're offensive line. Like, they know those guys. They have that chemistry. They know the game of football. They just think faster than you. They know what to look for. When you come into the league, you're learning these offenses, you're learning these defenses. You don't know exactly what to look for in a scheme, in the schematics, looking across from you. That year two, that's when you started to learn how to watch film during year one. That's when you go into year two. When you go into the offseason, you now know what to work on from year one. So he's talking about that right now. Year two is a big step. And it's a step that a lot of guys can take and take it to the next level. You saw Justin Jefferson, wide receiver from Minnesota. Well, he got even better than he was his rookie year. But you know why? Because it's a step that you got to want to take. It's, got, it's a step that it doesn't just come. It's like we talked about last week. Oh, I'm year two. It should be better. It should be easier. Oh, I kind of know this team. You got to be willing to take that step. And like you said, those are plays in my playbook, but I'm not showing anybody that. So I think he's taking the step mentally. Now it's time to see him doing the football field. And look, he took a huge step last year, the second half of last year, from, from the second half of last year to the end of last year, and now an extra step, a bigger step, from year one to year two. Do you remember what you were like year one to year two? I do. Do you remember how, how much easier, how, how much it slowed down for you? I do. I, I think I spent a lot of time my, my rookie year in a, well, one, Romeo Cornell, they didn't want to put rookies on the field. Very old mindset. So once again, it's Cleveland. But I think in year one, I struggled at the line of scrimmage a little bit. You know, I was, I was up too high. I struggled with my feet at the line of scrimmage a little bit, so I would get jammed or I would take a little longer to get into my routes. So oh, so a lot of times the, come, the quarterback looks at it, oh, he's not in that route yet. I got to come off of him. I got to go to the next read. I got to go to the second read. Or I got to go to the tight end or check down and throw the ball away. So I think that's what I notice in watching film is that you got to get off the ball. 
Now you gotta get off the line of scrimmage. You gotta drop your hips. You gotta drop your center of gravity so that you can't give them a huge target to show. So I think that's one thing that I gotta, and then route running, like on deep routes, like selling the go route. Like, you know, the guys that run the best comebacks, the best out routes, the best big digs, and they have that, uh, they clear that space. That's because these guys are selling the go route at the wide receiver position. So you open your hips and you take off, and then they put their foot in the ground, they come back and run a comeback, or they run it out. So that's what I had to get better at. But once you start seeing it, like once you start seeing the change that you wanted to see, once you start seeing the, the work extra that you're putting in, when you're listening to the coaches or you're listening to veteran players that are saying, hey, look, this is what you got to do, or this is what you got to work on, or this is what you need to, to put the emphasis on. But once you start seeing those things happen, you know what it does? Oh man, it turns you into a it turns you into a knowledge junkie. Cause then you want to go like after practice. Now you want to run more routes. You want to catch more passes. Then you start getting the defensive backs, Ryan. And I'm like, hey, uh, hey, uh, Gary, would you work after with me a little bit after practice? And you know, let me show me like when you put your hand and you were able to get your hand on my chest. How were you able to get your hand there? So that's what it turns you into, and you get better, and you want more, and you want more knowledge and more knowledge, and eventually you get to a level where you like. I'm a ride like this is the NFL because there is a moment Ryan where it's like you no longer feel like the rookie you no longer feel like the guy that's trying to make things happen there's a moment happen where it turns on and you can look across from me it doesn't matter who it is it could be Chan Bailey it could be Darrell Rivas it could be Richard Sherman it could be Marcus Trufant it could be whoever is across from you you don't give AF you don't because you know oh we're even we're on even playing fields now, but that moment happens, and when it happens, it's special, but you got to put the work in to get there. You talk about that year one to year two transition. It's the same for the head coach. I'm going to give you, I'm going to read for you the quote that he had today that made me, uh, remind, it reminded me of a quote that I heard from John Madden. I'll tell that to you next. Also, ways Michigan can win the national title. Ooh. I want to get to that, and I want to let everybody know on, on the chat, we do see the new Hard Knocks trailer that HBO has released. We cannot show that to you because of the HBO restrictions. Uh, we would get pulled down off of YouTube, and we certainly uh, don't want that. Great trailer, though. Uh, looks good. Looks like Dan Campbell and those guys are dialed in over there. So we'll do all that next. But first, a message from Cintron. The official drink of the Red Wings. That's right. Cintron is the official drink of the Red Wings. Get energized with Cintron. You see that crown on the top of Cintron? That's because they want you to be kings. They want to king you, queen you with the product that is amazing. They want to be here for the memories. And now, here's a memory you can be a part of. Pre-order this limited edition six-pack at CintronWorld.com forward slash Red Wings, it is a mixture of the flavors they have. I'm talking the cranberry, I'm talking the classic, and I'm talking the sugar free. It is uh, amazing. Centron. Try the product out. Be here for the memories. Like you said, Centron, live it, drink it with Centron. When you need apparel, there's only one place to go Big Frog in Novi. With no setup fees, no artwork fees, no minimum, and a 24-hour turnaround, you can have your whole team outfitted in no time. Embroidery, direct-to-garment, vinyl, and screen printing, Big Frog has it all in all the styles you want. So whether it's a sports team, fundraiser, school event, or corporate needs, Big Frog is your one-stop destination. Visit bigfrog.com slash novi or call 844-4-BIG-FROG. All at Big Boy. Try a chicken club, chicken cordon bleu, or sunrise ham and cheddar. All on our grilled ciabatta bread. Or keep it light with our Michigan apple, chicken Caesar, or Greek salad. And don't forget to cool off with a frosty hand-dipped cookies and cream or strawberry shake. You heard it here first. Summer just got better. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Lemieux and McCarty, who've had a good knockdown drag up. There they go, right on the wall. They were talking to one another. Woodward Sports. 
the summertime place for you to hang out is right downtown, and it's a beautiful location. It's called the Monroe Street Midway. They got free Wi-Fi for you to be there. You can play hoops. Oh. Ryan, Armani, and Braylon were out there knocking down shots. Yes, sir. See if you can Boom. Hit that same shot as Braylon yeah, and but... Armani hit. Just Armani was off the court too when he hit the shot. So if you think you can do it, Legit. go down to the Monroe Street Midway today. Check it out. It's right there by Campus Marshes, right off Monroe. They got food, they got entertainment, and of course art from Detroit artists. So you got to support. Yeah. Local hit up the Monroe Street Midway. Everybody's got something to say about the shot, man. I gotta, I gotta go back and give you your just do, man. This, this is how I break the shot down. We were shooting some shots before we started doing on air. He wasn't. Ryan wasn't. I was shooting some shots before Ryan got there. Kind of testing the rims out, seeing what it was. Well, Campus Marshes, aka Monroe Street Midway, is in an amazingly awkward situation because, like, it's it's where it's placed. That wind comes off Detroit River. Like, it, sh it blows right oh, through yeah. campus marshes. So, when I was shooting jumpers, and before you say I, don't have, a, I have a broke jump shot, but that may be true, <laughs> but it still was windy as hell. You can see the ball flying this way, flying this way. So, I'm like, all right, it's going to be interesting. You go out there, no warm up, no nothing. It's hot. We're sweating. Got a towel, towel on my on head. head. We're in the Thanks middle of the doing the DJ show. DJ Tom T. Get up there, boom, shoot it. Look good from jump. Went in and sat back down. That's a hard thing to do because I've seen Steph Curry go out to some of these events and having fun and shooting. And I put up some air balls and put up some bricks. So shout out to my boy Ryan. And my well, boy. I appreciate you for the recognition. Shout out to Braylon Edwards for for winning the event as well. Hey, man, that's what we do. Um, All we do is win, 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 no matter what. So I was a kid. I was watching the Cowboys game. Pat Summerall, John Madden. Never forget this. And I looked and searched tire, tirelessly on the internet for it. But John Madden says this quote. It was like the fourth quarter. Now the Cowboys just called their final timeout. And what that means is they don't have any more timeouts. Okay. And it was the greatest... I just loved it. Yeah. Maddenisms were the best. Uh, I remember watching, and it was, they were down by 10. I think the Lions were playing. Yeah. They were down by 10. He's like, well, they don't need 7 and 3 or 3 and 7. And you're like, yeah, that's 10. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> uh, it's just, it, it yeah. was so great. So it reminded me today when Dan Campbell talking about the jump from year one to year two, it doesn't only extend from the players, it extends to the coaches as well. Yeah. So his quote today was, we're functioning better than we did at this time a year ago. And what that means is we're functioning better than we did a year ago at this time. <laughs> and and I, yeah. I think dope, it's so though. great because, I mean, he said it so simplistically, but it, it really is true. He said, my coaches know what to expect from me. My coaches know what I want. My players know what I want. Everybody in the office knows what the expectation yeah. is when they walk into this building. And last year, we were just figuring this out. And Stick and I were talking about this yesterday, Braylon. It's no different from us. Yeah. You and I know how to put a show together now. You and I can, can uh, not talk to each other all day, come in, look at a rundown or a shot sheet, and know exactly what we're going to talk about today. And know what the other guys think. Yes. Yeah, it's... It, it takes that, even though you, as a guy like Dan Campbell, let's start there. A guy like Dan Campbell, a guy has been an interim head coach, guy has been on coaching staff, the guy has been a player, so he's been coached. He knows what it be, to means like to be in a culture that's good. He knows what it's like to be in a culture that's bad. So you know these things, and you, you jot them down as you're wanting to be a coach. You say, well, I'm going to pick this up from Sean Payton, or I, I like that this coach did this, or I didn't like that this coach did this. When you become a head coach, it's not so easy to say this is what I want to be and what I don't want to be. You got to learn players. You got to learn the culture. Some players are different. Like no coach can, no no player can be coached the exact same way. Like that's another thing that you can't do. So it's just a bunch of things that you have to learn, Ryan, on the fly. You know what to expect out of certain players, what to expect out of certain coaches. Like you just all of this happens in the in the space of learning each other and creating a team and creating an identity and creating a culture. It takes work. It takes effort, but it takes an individual to know, hey, you know what? I got to pay attention to these nuances and got to make sure we get better. And they are a better team this year than they were last year. Last year they were just trying to figure out who the hell the, the, the 50 to the 61 guys were out there and what were we going to do. Now they know some of those positions. 
I know these seven guys are a lot. I know these seven guys are a lot. I know what to expect out of these guys. I know how to coach these guys. I know what ticks them off. Yep. I know what pisses them Motivate off. Them. I know how I know how to far to push Frank right now before he gets to that point. You're like, all right, all right, mm. don't don't push Frank past that. I know I can get a little bit more out of this player than this player in certain situations. All that comes with taking time and learning. Yeah, uh, when you were saying that, it brought me back to a couple Chuck Daly quotes, right? He's like, I'm not a coach. I manage 12 corporations because everybody is a corporation. They're millions. Great quotes. Damn, that's that's one of the greatest quotes I've ever yeah. heard. And then he, um, he had another one, too, that was like, I treat everybody the same. Differently, <laughs> yeah. and, like, and that's, Damn, that's what you I have mean, to that do. That is so great. That's why he's a championship coach. That's right. That's why he's one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Just thinking about, I just uh, on my computer here, I see uh, James Washington of the Cowboys out six, six to, to ten, ten weeks, fractured foot. Um, the the Cephas thing keeps showing up. On can my... I cry real quick? Can yeah. I? Can I? Can I be that fantasy yeah. football yeah. guy and cry, Ryan? I was it, crying it, to yeah. you before the show. Four guys on my dynasty team got injured today. Oof. Anthony Schwartz is down. Oh. Uh, Van Jefferson needs surgery. Amari Cooper is down. And then Cephas got hurt. Four! So already. this Van Jefferson's down? Van Jefferson's getting surgery. Yeah. Six weeks. Ooh. The, the Cephas thing uh, hurt the keeps showing up on my Twitter timeline here. And I'm just off the top of my head to put you on the spot. Who's the one line besides Goff that can't go down? That's tough. I would have to it's say. It's a great question, isn't no, it? No, it's, it's, it's a great question. Because, I, I mean, I don't want Quintess Cephas to go down for a number of reasons. I, but that is a position where I'm like, uh, okay, I say, they could weather that. I'd say, too, I, I'd say. Either. It's tough on the spot. I'd say. To I, me, Ragnow. I would say. I would, Ragnow went down last year, and the, the, the backup Jonah was Jackson. damn near Pro Bowler. He's yeah, an alternate. But he's I, like I, he's I, the only irreplaceable guy on that line, right? But, but he's not. But what I'm Sue? saying, what, what what I'm saying is, Ragnow was they down last, him year, last year, and, he was and the freaking backup player. was an alternate Pro Bowler. I would yeah. say. I would say Penesu. Yeah. I would say it's got to be it's it's got to be Penay Sue because I was gonna say DeAndre Swift. Me too. I was gonna say DeAndre Swift and Penay Sue. Actually, because, yeah, I would say those two. Because DeAndre Swift, what we expect, and look, we heard Corey Woods talk about how good Jamal Williams looked. He's lost weight. He's now probably seven pounds lighter yeah. than he's played at. He's got him play phenomenally. Jamal Williams, and, and, I, and, and I love his energy. He's amazing. I can't wait to watch Jamal. I love I, him. I, 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 love, I love his energy. I, I, I love him as well. He ain't DeAndre Swift. The stuff I saw DeAndre Swift do at Georgia was amazing. The things that you've seen in little short spurts in his first two years at Detroit Lions, you're like, man, if we can get that for 17 games now. You, so, and, and you know he can catch out of the backfield. Last year he had 70 catches. He can catch out of the backfield. He can run between the tackles. He can run by you and run over you. Mix that with that offensive line. If he, hurt, if he gets hurt, changes the dynamic of mm. what this offense is going to be and vice versa, Panay Su. Okay. So I'm going those two. Okay, what about this one? And I hesitate to say it. But Aiden Hutchinson. I mean, they could not get after the quarterback last year. Right. If you can't get to the quarterback, then you have absolutely no chance. Uh, those, it just, there's a myriad of different reasons. The thing about Aiden is one of those things where we know what he, we know what they told us in the scouting report, what he could be this season. We know we saw at times at Michigan, whether it was the Penn State game, whether it was the Nebraska game, whether it was Michigan State game or Ohio State game, we saw what he could be when he was hitting on all cylinders. Now add that to the NFL, he hasn't done it yet, so we don't know, although we, we, we think that he's going to be a 10, sack, uh, mm. 10, 10 sacks a year type guy, 12 sacks a year type guy. We believe that to be the case. But if he gets, if something happens to him, I won't even say it, it, the defense have figured out. They'll play patchwork defense like they played last year. They they won't have a chance to be as good as that, but they'll be better than they were last year, even still. If DeAndre Swift goes down, that changes the that that changes sustaining drives. That changes getting first downs. That changes time of possession, stalling teams out. That changes scoring points. That changes so many things if DeAndre Swift 
gets hurt. I would say it's DeAndre Swift, Panay second. I want to do a Michigan football topic next. It was on ESPN.com. Ways that the Wolverines could win the national championship. Four question marks. I'll give those to you next. But first, a message from Guardian Alarm. They're your local security experts. Have been for over 90 years. You see that black and yellow sign out in front of the house that tells the bad guys one thing. Stay out. Stay out. Stay out. Whether it's your home or your business, they're 24-7 local monitoring. Make sure what is important to you is safe. Call this number above my head right now. 1-800-STAY-OUT. Stay Stay out. out. That number again, 1-800-STAY-OUT. Stay out. Call them today. Tell them Woodward Sports sent you. We'll be right back. College football. Stay out. We sent you. He's going deep, right side. Oh, that is Edwards out there. He goes up in the air at the goal line. Hey, it's Brad Edwards here, wanting to welcome the sports marketing agency to Woolworth Sports Network, to the family. Glad to have you guys. For the last decade, the sports marketing agency has literally leveraged athletes around issues such as mental health and substance abuse. Glad that we can finally start trying to get the stigma off of mental health that's been there for all these years. New to the game or a season better? OddsTrader.com has everything you need to make the right bet ahead of kickoff. Begin your handicapping journey with OddsTrader. Improve your edge by finding the best price on every game from sportsbooks in your backyard. Take advantage of the numerous sign-up bonus offers to pad your bankroll. Dive into key game statistics, player performance, and even account for the projected game day weather. Best of all, you can use the OddsTrader bet tracker to keep a log of your action. Welcome to OddsTrader, and best of luck. Three NBA championships. Detroit fans were there. Eleven Stanley Cups. Detroit fans were there. Four World Series wins. Detroit fans were there. And uh, that one Lions playoff win in 1991. Yeah, Detroit fans were there. Woodward Sports, where the fans are. Ooh, let me tell you about Alta because uptime matters. I am telling you, if you've got a big construction project, Alta's where you go. you got a small construction project, Alta's where you go. If you're doing just a backyard uh, playhouse for your kid, make sure you get to Alta because you want to get that done. You want your kid in the back playing, and they have all the equipment that you need. Alta, because uptime matters. Alta. 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 So I want to do a segment of college football if we could. ESPN did this for about 20 college football teams and we'll do it with Michigan State tomorrow okay but they give four ifs on whether the team can win the national championship or not Michigan was obviously one of the 20 teams that they did this on because they feel like they do have a chance plus 5,000 to win the national championship Uh, Michigan State again uh, they're in this as well we'll do theirs tomorrow so the four ifs are you ready I'm ready how about some music for this Got some, you got me? Got some music on, buddy. Let's go. If, if the Wolverines can survive another defensive coordinator change, Harbor brought in Jesse Minter, another former Ravens assistant. Can Minter maintain a high level without an adjustment period? Braylon, you like Jesse Minter, defensive coordinator? And would you say that he will have an adjustment period because they don't play anybody for a month? I don't know Jesse Minter, but I know that he was on the Baltimore Ravens staff as well. I know his father uh, is defensive coordinator as well. Um, I like him enough to know that what Michigan did, what they put in place last year with McDonald, it's going to stay in place this year. It's going to be the same type of defense. They won't have to adjust to another defense. So they may be adjusting to a coordinator, but they're not adjusting to a different defense. So, yes, I think with the time they have in these first bum games they got, They'll be fine. If pass rushers can emerge, Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo gave McDonald loads of pass pressure without extreme blitzing, but both were lost to the NFL. Ends like Taylor Upshaw and Brayden McGregor were strong in small samples, but they have massive shoes to fill. So two ifs, yeah. two for two, defensive questions. You ready for number three? They'll be, they'll be able to do that as well. If young safeties are good safeties, Ooh, three good for one. three defensive questions with Michigan. Regression in the pass rush would put extra pressure on secondary, replacing two excellent safeties in Brad Hawkins and Dax Hill. Sophomores R.J. Moten and Rod Moore both played quite a bit last season, but Michigan will be leaning heavily on underclassmen. Three ifs, three of the four ifs, 
on defense. What say you? Now, that third one, that's going to be a good one. That's going to be an interesting one. Michigan's always had some secondary guys that you can depend on, like even when Brady Hoke was there, even when Jim Har first, uh, John Harbaugh first started, whether it was Jordan Lewis or whether it was the Hill brothers. Like, we've always had DB go far as back as Leon Hall. Right now, still have Turner, but outside of that, looks a little, little skeptical, a little, little, little question mark. But that, I think, is the biggest one right there. I think that's the biggest one. Because even the defensive line, they had guys that played last year. They had guys that started all, uh, all 14 games they played in. So that's the one that I think, if they can get that figured out by the time that they get to Michigan State, by the time they get to Ohio State, that one can be a huge one. Now the sexy one here, Braylon. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. If an experienced passing game goes from good to excellent, the offense lost coordinator Josh Gaddis but returns eight starters, jumping to 19th in offensive uh, specialty. The Wolverines could jump even further if they could find a bit more of a high-end passing game with quarterbacks Cade McNamara, running back Blake Corum, tight end Eric All, and all of those receivers. Uh, they are loaded. Let's say we know Kay McNamara is going to be a starter, because we do. Kay McNamara is going to be the starter. Same thing we talk about with Jared Goff. Corey talked about him taking that step from year one to year two. Talking about him taking thro making throws in camp so far that he wouldn't make last year. Talk about the attitude in which he brought when he breaks the huddle down. His presence in the huddle. That's what I need to see out of Kay McNamara. It's not necessarily from him. It's from Jim Harbaugh and the offensive coaching staff. I need you to make me believe that we can win games with Kay McNamara. Because there were games that they played last year. Kay had 140 yards passing. Kay had 190 yards passing. You almost felt as if they were playing Kay McNamara just because they didn't trust anybody else at times. And all they trusted was their running game, especially after Ronnie Bell got hurt. So what I want to see from them at the start of the season, I think it's the, the, uh, the Rams, that they start the season off with, Hawaii and Colorado State. Make me know that this guy is just starting quarterback. Let him run the offense mm -hmm. that's not just handing the ball off to Blake Corm or handing the ball off to Donovan Edwards or doing jet sweeps with Mike Samuels still coming off the edge. Let me see this guy, K. McNamara, from start. Commander, I want to see K. McNamara go out, boom. I don't want to see any runs in the, on the first drive of a game. Go down there, I'm talking about I'm talking 12 plays, I'm talking 12 passes or a couple RPOs in which he makes the right decision this time. Let me know that he has commanded that offense. And then it's like, all right, cool. It's one thing for him to just hand the ball off to Hassan Haskins and oh, get in one game against Michigan State where they're waiting for the run. He throws for 355. There's another thing when he can go out there and average 245 yards a game. That's what I'm waiting to see. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think it's incumbent upon the Michigan Wolverines to sling that ball around all year long yeah. and have some fun. And, and put up 40-plus points a game. You are going to have the ability to do that. You're talented enough to do that. And if you are a special talent in college football, in high school right. football, why would you ever want to go to Michigan if they play that same damn boring offense? See, the thing about it last why? year. Why? The thing about it last year was teams know what Michigan is going to do last year when it's, well, <laughs> for a very long time. But teams know what Michigan is going to do. Last year they did. Going into the Indiana game or the Rutgers game or the Maryland game or insert team in Ohio State, Michigan State. They knew what Michigan was going to do. They knew they run the ball with Haskins up the middle. They knew they bring Blake Corum in for jet sweeps and also they bring him in for the more sexy plays and when they stretch the, uh, the RPOs. But they still couldn't stop it. Michigan had the best line in the country. Michigan had the best backfield in terms of a dual-headed dual monster, uh, arguably best backfield with a dual threat. Then you got guys on the tight end. They couldn't stop it. So that's why they were able to have so many success. Now, this year, is Blake Corm going to be able to take the load of Fasal Haskins? Is Diamond Edwards going to be able to take the load of Blake Corm as a number two? You got all these wide receivers, all these weapons. Stop telling me about them and show me. Go out there. Because you don't have that defensive line last year going into the season. Last year, that defensive line, that defensive front, that defense, period, they allowed you to stub your toe. They allowed you to go out there and pucks around against Penn State, pucks around against Nebraska, pucks around. They allowed you to do that. 
It's not going to be so easy this year. So I need to see K. McNamara. I need to see the offense come out and be different. I need to see a pass as well as run offense. Go out there and have some fun and score some points. It's going to be an exciting season. Plenty of time to talk Michigan football. We'll do the same with Michigan State tomorrow. How do the Spartans win the national championship? ESPN put out that list and, and gave some four ifs for them as well. We'll do that tomorrow. Next, we will come right back. And we will hit Maz's videos of the uh, day. Sticks version Sticks of the videos version. of the day. Big shoes to fill on the big show. We'll do it next. Armani and Edwards. Who was for the network? Bottom line. It's a great day to get some Centron in your life. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There it is, there it is. Centron, here we go. Gotta grab the cranberry. Oh wait, it's two for four. Gotta double up with the classic as well. Centron World, baby. Centron, available at select Kroger's. And if you want to know how, go to at CentronWorld.com. You get dope like me. You know what? Why wait? Ah, great taste, guaranteed. Hey, this is Mr. Kearney, Chief Academic Officer of Academy of War. I want to welcome you to the brand new Phil House. The state of the art facility has a regulation basketball court, volleyball court, soccer field. It can be used for 707 football, our K8 academic features, AM, PM, Lashkey, small classroom size, learning street, futuristic media center, free breakfast and lunch, Holton Mifflin curriculum, academic games, K8 athletics, and more. Enroll today at academywarn.net. It took exploring 50 different formulas and hosting countless taste tests, but we believe Gypsy Vodka is the smoothest vodka on the market. Don't believe us? Ask the owners. We're Mike and Adam Kazanowski with High Five Spirits Distillery. We're in a close to about 1,200 locations throughout Michigan. We wanted to create a brand that was geared more towards freedom, love, adventure, and at the end of the day, we really wanted to tell a story that inspired other people to take risks, follow their dreams, whatever that might be. The only sports network in Detroit that starts with a W. You know, because we win. Woodward Sports, Detroit's winning sports network. All right, Woodward Sports Network, Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards. We've got Stick, we've got Fletch, Maz and Sam off today. Maz, by the way, Mount Rushmore. Is he? Did, he better. He got there p- yesterday. He sent some pictures yesterday to the oh, to the to the group. I, we did not get those on the air. I apologize for those. <laughs> Put them on <laughs> tomorrow, man. Yeah. But yeah, I have a video from Maz's vacation in, in Maz's videos. Oh, you do. Oh, there yeah. we go. Do we have the uh, Do we have the sounder? Uh, you want, you want to hit the intro? Let's, let's get you to you. Uh, let's do it. It is time now for Maz's v- 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 videos, videos of, of the day. day. Now it's time for Maz's videos of the day, only on the Woodward Sports Network. I mean, I think one player we all agree is super entertaining for the Detroit Lions and cannot wait to see him on Hard Knocks. Uh, He actually did a great interview for us last year on the Woodward Sports Network. Jamal Williams, swaggy being swaggy. If you have not seen what this guy is doing out at training camp, check this video out. Every team needs a swaggy. Oh yeah! What you gonna do when the swear daddy comes for you? The lion's coming and the bride is with us. Oh yeah! <laughs> How great is that? Uh, he's a, he's, he's a, so entertaining. He's the, he's he's just a guy loving life, man. That's what I love about. Him. He works hard. He's showing you can do both. You can have a personality. You also can enjoy life. So no, I love him, man. I can't wait. He's gonna take over the show. And who, somebody, like Maz called that a long time ago. Or it was you. Said he was Not gonna, me. I want to say, I want to say. Probably got to be Maz. He had, been Maz on he had another great quote today being like, hey, man, I'm a dork. If I didn't play football, I wouldn't have any friends. Sure. <laughs> uh, Braylon, on the teams you played on, were there like the class clown of the of the team? Like, Oh, man, that might have been me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I got in so much trouble in school. No, uh, I just like to be goofy, like to be funny. But there's always – that guy, because most fo- most locker rooms are funny, whatever, right. whatever sport it is. Right. I don't care whatever. It's like guys, like athletes are funny. Even here at right. Woodward Sports, it's like, it, 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 this is a locker room. Right. I would consider this a locker room. But there's always like that guy, like Bart Scott was that guy for the Jets. Like Cleveland Browns was Jamal Lewis with his country voice. Like everybody has that guy where you're like, 
Nah, don't mess with him because he will roast you and light you up. So Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And every team has that guy that you can rely on. They're your friends, and I think we all have friends that make sure we're taken care of. And this friend, uh, I think we've all had this friend too. Let's watch this video. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh jeez. So he dislocated that shoulder. Well, look at the dude stumbling off that push the table. He is dying of laughter. Oh my gosh. And then, of course, alcohol takes over and he stands up. But watch him. One, two, bit. <laughs> oh, oh, geez. I didn't see it the first time. You didn't see him push the table? No, I see that. Oh, nah, nah, geez. That's nah. what friends are for. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, nah, and then uh, here, Maz sent us video of his we'll, vacation. He, we'll play like he, that. He's at the pool. He's having a good time with his family. Here is Maz trying to dive off the diving board. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I saw this. Come on, Maz. Come on, you can do, do it, man. He's Come do on. Butt flip. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I've never seen that. I've never seen that done before. Yeah. Uh, especially out of a spry gentleman like that. I mean, I'd yeah. be afraid to, like, squash my, you yeah. know what. Yeah, your, your family jewels. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, luckily, you probably can't feel his anymore. Oh, man. Yeah, I was going to say, when you're that old, they're dangling, Not too, even man. Oh, dangling. yeah. They're hanging there. <laughs> hey, but he, hanging out. His level of... <laughs> His level of I don't give a you know what is amazing. That, that's dope. Jeez, that's I mean, he legend. goes straight down. And yeah. another thing, I'm I'm a big fan of athleticism. You know, whenever you can jump over a car, well, you know, remember Blake Griffin jumping over the Kia? The uh, dunk uh, 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 he, he, I, he didn't jump over a car. That's that's cap. He jumped over the hood. Okay, well, yeah, it, that doesn't count. Either way, it's more athletic than I'll yeah. ever be in my life. But I love watching people jump over things. Yeah. And my man jumping over this car. Check this out. Gassed. Wait oh, for yeah, it. Much. Wait for it. Oh, 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 shit. Oops. What? <laughs> I knew he was going to get hit. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I don't know if he's dead or not, but hopefully he's fine. Who is? Oosh. Oh. <laughs> Dude, are you kidding me? Man, like that, hit internal, by Ray Lewis. that internal bleeding is about to be a real thing oh right there, buddy. Oh, my God. Dude, that's... It, it catches I, you off guard because you've seen him jump the car so many times, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> he just uh, gets wrecked. He, he just... <laughs> I'm, like, I'm close he up yeah, he's shocking off. I don't know why. People, oh, my God. They did it for the gram, baby. Oh, my God. That's, but that's what happens when you do it for the gram, and you really you may do, not have that skill. Do it for the gram. It's like, I know I can make this work. Damn. Have you ever done it before? No. What, what makes you think you can yeah. do it? Oh, I've seen people do it want before. Those, right? Want those like a, views. The car's going to go under me. Exactly. It's, fine. it's not it's the hard. I've seen it done in movies. Want That's those what views. It I've seen it done in movies. I bet you have. Braylon wasn't here yesterday. Do you have the one yesterday where the guy cut him? Oh, man. Oh, you don't have that? Okay. Braylon, i got to show hot, you. The hot dog one? You saw that? Yeah. Woo! Someone waking up. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh, somebody, somebody got knocked out. Uh, but those are your videos of the day. We'll good be back job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job, everybody. Braylon, get us out of here. That was the fastest videos of the day. Look I'm at like, that. Man, man, you, when you come back, you got some shoes to fill. <laughs> hey, uh, Tiger. Seven hundred million. Crazy. Turn it, turn, turn it down. Turn it down. Yeah. Turn it down. Turn it down. Uh, well, yeah. He's already already. Yeah. He's, he's already got uh, a one point eight billion. What's another eight hundred thousand? Eight hundred million. Eight hundred million. 800 million. <laughs> Same thing nice. at, the, at this point. Uh, glad to be back. We are rocking. We are rolling. You see Detroit, man. We're representing it well. My man Ryan Armani in the building. My brother got the till pistons yes. on today. Got the Detroit Lions helmet right there. That means we're coming. The city of Detroit. Is trying to do some things if we can stay injured, stay, stay injury free from this point on. But tomorrow, join us. We'll have another big show, another big day on Wednesday. Here we are to play. My man Stick filling in for Maz did an amazing job. Thank you, sir. Let's just keep having fun. Job, Stick. Hey, having we, fun. Having we, we, fun. We're just guys conversating, man, talking about sports. This is and forever will be Ryan. The bottom line. There it is.